Pain Are you Mala. talking about the Bob Weir concert? Although Pain my Mala. my brother and dad went to Bob Weir last night and they said that was really great too. <laughs> we killed it. We were the we were kind of like the opening act in the parking lot. We did like a three piece band and it went really well. It was really fun. We got so, a lot of weird things in our tip bucket though that you know from the dead room <laughs> that I you know, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> so we are streaming live right now um so everybody knows but let's give it just a couple minutes because i do expect a few more folks to hop on for anyone in the public tuning in we're giving it just a couple minutes to see if we get other folks that hop on Hi, Mike. We're just giving it just a minute. Maybe we'll start in one minute, Andrew. Okay, 1103. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, Maggie. Hey. We are streaming. We're just giving it a minute because some folks are hopping on. I'm not seeing the stream on the YouTube page. Are we sure we're live? I'll double check. Yeah, it looks like it's not streaming, so let me try to troubleshoot real quick. Yeah, I still see the waiting. Thanks for your patience, everyone. We'll get started as soon as I get the clearance that the live stream is going. I, I do love playing television theme songs. It is fun, Lyle. <laughs> All right, we have someone fixing the streaming situation now. It shouldn't take long. I'll keep you guys posted. Cool.
still don't see it. We are live on YouTube and I'm looking for the public input stream. Uh, the old link wasn't working. I see it now. God, such a beautiful morning. Dana, we're still holding. So we're streaming on YouTube. We're not streaming on public input. I'm tempted, and I'm trying to troubleshoot. I'm tempted for us to start going ahead since it is being streamed and recorded in one location. Um, let's just give it one more minute. Sorry, everyone. I'm going to suggest we get started since it is streaming and being recorded and we have a lot to talk about and I value everyone's time. So um, so we'll continue to troubleshoot with the public input site, but I'll hand it over um, to Andrew to get us started administratively. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Sorry about the delay. Um, I'm Chair Andrew Fletcher. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the March 25th Public Space Management Committee. This is our first meeting. Um, sort of after being reformed um, in the quasi post pandemic world that we're living in right now. Um, we are attempting to stream live on our virtual engagement hub, but we are live on YouTube right now. Um, we also have an option to listen live by phone. Hopefully that's going to go live with the virtual engagement hub. So for everybody that's out there watching today, thank you um, um, very much for being here. And uh, it's nice to be able to get this work started again. Um, and uh, so, yeah, the, so the task force makeup, we are, I think, about 20 um, that is assigned here. And um, what I'm going to do now is in no particular order as a way of both taking attendance and getting everybody to introduce themselves. I am going to call your name and ask you to just sit, sort of tell us what hats you're wearing, what interests you're bringing and who you're representing this morning. So um, I'm going to go first. Um, uh, my name is Andrew Fletcher. I'm the vice chair of the Public Art and Cultural Commission and the vice chair of the City of Asheville's Downtown Commission. Um, I've got a lot of experience on the street uh, working with the Asheville Buskers Collective and being a busker um, as well. I'm a, on the uh, board member with the Asheville Music Professionals, and we worked very closely with the um, noise ordinance um, side of things. And, um, and I'm going to be the chair and leading 
um, the and facilitating these meetings. Uh, so uh, the next uh, next on the list here, no particular order, Susan Hutchinson. There you go. Sorry. Um, I I work for Mountain Express, and I also am involved with the community publishing group. So I'm representing the um, mostly those boxes on the street that have print publications in them. That I know there's a love hate relationship because we're we're fighting constantly the some of the vagrancies in the homeless situation with people. Uh, destroying the boxes, messing with the papers, taking them and littering, making litter on the sidewalk. Um, I'm trying to balance that dilemma and that problem with the necessity and the um, the value of having print media in uh, in the city to help make it stay vibrant. So uh, trying to, I keep the purple boxes looking purple. That's my job, and I also go around doing other things. And Cindy works with me. She she might be here, stand in for me at some meetings. Uh, but yeah, I, I represent print media. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Uh, next, we have Pat Kappas. Is Pat here today? Pat is not joining us today. Okay. Um, next, Mary Ann West. No? All right. Gio Rodriguez. Uh, good morning. Um, I pr currently sit on the um, downtown commission, just stepped off planning and zoning for a long time. Started out with public um, works, a uh, public um, art, and um, kind of introduced um, Andrew to this whole thing uh, when we were working together with the uh, buskers. Um, my particular interest is I spent. A, I'm a landscape architect and an urban forester, and I spent a lot of time <laughs> in a professional capacity as the landscape services manager for the city of Durham. So I took care of the downtowns and the parks and the public spaces and all of that. So I approached this sort of through uh, uh, a lens of having uh, not only managed large public spaces, but having lived in the French Quarter for a long, long time in, in New Orleans. And so I, I know how to live there and I know how, what it takes to, to, um, <clears throat> to have a really good functioning urban space. And that's my interest. Great, thank you, Gil. And thanks for getting me involved in the city boards and commissions all those years ago. Um, uh, it's been it's been a fun ride. Um, next, we have Megan Rogers, please. Hi, I'm Megan Rogers, um, executive director of the Asheville Downtown Association. I think I'm wearing a couple of hats when it comes to this group: downtown business representative, special event organizer, and downtown commission representative as well. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Megan. Uh, next, Mike DeSirio. Is Mike here today? Yep, I'm here. That's right. Yeah, th uh, thanks for having me, guys. Happy Friday to everybody. Um, so I work at Homeward Bound, and I'm the uh, program manager for their outreach program. So basically, in a nutshell, I go out and provide homeless services to people that are in camps. Um, I also help navigate um, any kind of um, or troubleshoot um, with businesses in the downtown area and community members if they come across somebody who is homeless, um, maybe somebody, for instance, sleeping in front of their business or you know behind their house. Uh, so I help them kind of navigate that and um, to basically try to connect that person with resources and also educate the community. So that's me. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Peter Polly. Dana, do you see Peter here today? Haven't seen him. Okay. Uh, moving along next, Millen. So next, uh, Stephen Lee Johnson. I saw him in here a minute ago. He was here. He dropped off. Hopefully, he'll come back on. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back to him if he comes back. Uh, Michael Stratton. Uh, Maggie Ullman. Hey, y'all. Maggie. Um, 
I am here with a handful of hats like many of us. One is I'm on the Multimodal uh, Transportation Commission with John Bassoni, who will introduce himself later. And so as it relates to this specifically, you know, I think about all the public space that our roads and sidewalks take up. And so how is this going to show up in our conversations as kind of a first lens or a first hat? The second hat is uh, I'm a candidate for Asheville City Council. And so there's just so our downtown is our heartbeat. And so I'm excited to be part of a conversation where we're really trying to look in detail at things we want, because there's a lot of big picture things we talk about, but this is really where the rubber meets the road to, to support downtown. So I think it'll be fun to hang out and hopefully I can contribute. Um, and then just another hat is I was a city staffer for seven years. I was Asheville's first sustainability director. So that just gives me a lot of experience and lens in what cities can and can't do, how rules work, how bureaucracy works, how city hall works. And I think that can be useful when we're engaging in community, um, just kind of an inside lens now that I'm an outside person. So uh, can't wait to connect with each of you. Cool. Thank you, Maggie. And next we have John Bassoni. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I, like Maggie, wear several hats. Um, I serve on the Multimodal Transportation Commission for the city of Asheville, as well as the Transit Committee. Um, so uh, these public spaces are very important to, um, to the, both the commission and the committee. I also um, work downtown. I'm a real estate broker with Coldwell Banker King. Uh, so I represent a downtown business as well. I have a background in community development and real estate development. So um that's that's where i'm at great thank glad you john. to be here yeah glad to have you um kate Ribo. she's not here today okay thank you dana uh Nura edwards we've no uh okay mike mccarty hey everyone um mike mccarty uh owner of the lobster trap um i've been <clears throat> I've been living in Asheville now for 23 years, and I've been working downtown uh, for about 16. Also feels like I live downtown. Um, so uh, a lot of a lot of the issues um, on here on the agenda um, are things that I'm have a pretty invested interest in, uh, both as a citizen and a business owner. So I'm happy to uh, contribute here. So thank you. Great. We're glad to have you, Mike. All right. Next, Mike. Mike Rango. Hey, everybody. I'm Mike Rango, uh, representing Asheville Brewing Company downtown and Rabbit Rabbit, the new live music venue. Um, excited to be a part of the of this and looking forward to seeing what kind of impact we can make. Great. Glad to have you. Uh, John Wilson. We have John today. Hey everybody, uh, my name is John Wilson. I'm the general manager of Tupelo Honey Cafe, 12 College Street, directly across the street from Pritchard Park. Um, I wanted to say thank you uh, for allowing those of us uh, like Mike and Mike and myself uh, to be involved with this conversation. Um, both because I think, you know, a lot of us spend um, the majority of our waking hours uh, here in the downtown of Asheville. Um, and so we may be able to uh, provide a sort of frontline um, viewpoint of what's what's really going on down here outside of the conversations and outside of the camera lenses. Um, which you know, I don't know about the mics, but um, you know, I had the dubious honor of uh, having to go to court by because I was assaulted uh, by one of our park denizens uh, last year. Um, and I've, uh, I've, I've been, um, I've been here, I'm in my eighth year, so I've watched, uh, I don't know whether you would call it the evolution or the devolution of our downtown area in that time. Um, but as Mike said, sorry, this is going to Mike and Mike, uh, as Mr. McCarthy said, uh, a tremendous amount of things on this agenda, um, both directly impact myself and the hundred plus employees that I represent, uh, that spend the majority of our lives um, in downtown. So again, just thank you for allowing us uh, to be part of the conversation. Um, and I think we bring a lot to the table. Thank you. Uh, next on the list, I have Cecil Bothwell. 
Cecil here today? I don't see him in the list. Um, and last but not least, um, Lyle Rickards. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lyle Rickards. I am a, a busker here in Asheville for about the last six years. Uh, I am a hopefully a, a, a being part of the Asheville Buskers Collective and working with Abby over the years and playing with her. Uh, I've uh, kind of piggybacked with her on meetings and um, and data that we've collected as the Busker Collective. Uh, thank you so much for adding us on these conversations. Uh, as some of the restaurant people uh, and brewery people have just stated, uh, we spend as buskers a lot of time in the downtown area and we are amongst the throng of uh, the evolution of what's happening to Asheville. And um, I appreciate that we are brought into the conversation uh, as the restaurants and uh, the business owners. Uh, we are as buskers, the eyes and ears of this town for data of everyday life in Asheville. We are on almost every corner and uh, we are working with uh, a group of musicians who are musicians. So in the vernacular, we are very, an odd bunch uh, to, to say the least, uh, but we are a collective and we are um, really trying to work with the city on policies. And we have our own code of conduct, which we appreciate the city has given us, allowing us to do what we do without permits and allowing us to, I don't want to use the word self-govern, but, uh, allowing us to do what we do and and we are uh, our ears are open to uh, the business owners that we're playing in front of and uh, and we're trying to adjust our lives um, to kind of come uh, to cooperate with everybody uh, it's not only those people that walk by us and listen to our music uh, we also are concerned with the people that are behind us in those businesses and we want to work with you and uh, we are as, as a collective we're very open to suggestions and and talking to us before it goes into like police or anything like that or noise ordinance so uh thank you for letting me be in this discussion i hopefully i can stick around for most of it because it's a nice day and i gotta go out and play some music but you'll usually find me if anybody wants to find me i'm usually in front of the mass general store which mast is uh you know, is a, is a different bird than most places. It's a private property area. So their code of conduct for how we play there is a little stronger than the, the collectives, but uh, thank you for having me. Let's get this thing going. Thank you, Lyle. I see we got a couple people that are popping in a little late. Um, so uh, if I can ask Peter Polly, if I just uh, introduce yourself uh, and uh, your interest in, um, in what brings you to the public space management committee. Um, hey, I'm Peter Pole. Sorry about my tardiness today. Um, I'm the owner of Posana Restaurant right at One Biltmore Avenue. We've been there 13 years. Um, I'm, you know, in one of the middle of the, I guess, busiest places of downtown. And we have a lot of buskers, which is amazing. And um, some other undesirables. And um, we like very much... I guess downtown being used for the intent and purposes of why things were put there and and constructed like the parks and the mini parks and the benches for people that add to the liveliness of downtown and not to the detriment of downtown. Um, so, you know, we love downtown, we love the vibrancy and we just want to be a little part of hopefully keeping it headed in the right direction. Cool. Thank you, Peter. Um, and I see that Noor Edwards joined too. Can, uh, will you please introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Noor Edwards. I'm a co-owner at Asheville Discount Pharmacy. Um, and I'm interested in being part of this because I'd like to see, you know, just to have a voice in what's happening downtown. I haven't really got involved much with anything going on downtown until the past year. And, um, you know, have some concerns, but also love downtown and want to see it continue to thrive and be uh, part of the solution. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Now, I think that gets everybody from the um, from the citizen side. Um, Dana, is there anyone from city staff that you'd like to introduce? Um, sure, we'll be quick. Uh, Dana Frankel, I hope um, I hope I've connected with each of you. Downtown planning manager in our urban design and place strategies division in the planning department. 
We have Carly Stevenson here who works on public art and urban design, and she'll speak with you all a little bit later. David Hazard, also in our division, who works on urban design. And I think we had Jessica Morris, who's our Assistant Director of Transportation. So, I'm here. Uh, hi, Jessica, thanks for being here. <laughs> Um, so we'll keep rolling unless staff really wants to say a few words, but I think we've got a lot to try to get through. So thanks so much for everyone introducing yourselves and thank you for being here. I think as you can all see, we have like a pretty diverse range of perspectives going on with this group, which is super exciting. Um, I, I want to make sure you all are aware and there's, there's a lot of different links in the agenda. So hopefully you've gotten a little time just to navigate some of those materials. And if not, um, obviously there's time to do so afterwards. But the Downtown Commission did work on designating different, um, a number of different representatives to participate in this group. And so pretty much all of you are representing one, if not multiple of those um, perspectives here. And we, we really, we recognize public space is so important and so complicated and really wanna bring um, all of your various lenses to the table. So thank you. And it's gonna be so much fun, right? Like how often do we get this many like, varied folks kind of trying to focus on the same thing? So today is the, the main goal is to try to, um, to start from some shared foundation. And I don't expect most of our meetings to be virtual. I know it's, you know, it's a beautiful Friday, um, but for those who are missing the meeting, they'll be able to go back and, um, and watch this. And it just seems like the right format at this moment to try to get on the same page and to give you all some background. Um, some of you have been super involved and some of you are brand new to this group. And, um, so we'll do our best to kind of provide you guys with the, the key um, pieces of what got us to where we are now. And just as kind of a, a broad overview, the purpose of this group, and I do think there's, you know, there's room to evolve over time, but the city is managing public space every day and decisions are made every day. We operate a lot of programs we do push carts we do outdoor dining we you know work we don't have formal permitting for the buskers but we certainly work with the buskers um parking you know bike lanes like all of this is taking special events street trees um this is all taking place in public space um, for the purposes of this group and the way that we've approached this in the past is really focusing on streets and sidewalks um, parks kind of obviously they're important, but there's a lot of programs specific to parks and um, But we where we've had a lot of issues in terms of limited space and you know competing interests for use of that space and an opportunity and need to look at the way we're managing these areas. I think streets and sidewalks present um, you know is a is a special focus and priority. So that's that's gonna be primarily what we're looking at. And, um, and so the purpose of this group is really to help us advance and improve the policies and programs that we have in public space. We now have, you know, we have some work to do up front, um, which we'll talk about. We worked on a framework um, based on public input that kind of outlines pros and cons of various uses in public space. We want to make sure that we're all kind of feeling good about that framework that can inform staff on a day-to-day -day basis. But now we have you all, if and when staff is making big changes or, you know, working on a, a long-term parklet program or making changes to the way that outdoor dining is um, permitted and those standards, we can go to you all and get your input. And that's awesome because again, you're representing so many different lenses here. So thank you. And um, with that, I'm just gonna pull up some slides to help us talk a little bit more about background. Sure, if I could jump in just a real quick sure. too. I wanna, so that today is sort of like, we're sort of setting the table. <clears throat> we're not gonna be actually getting to have the meal yet. I'm looking forward to getting, uh, doing some walk arounds. I think that is where the real value and discussion and interaction takes place. 
Um, and also, I know that we all we're all wearing multiple hats, and I want to emphasize that what makes a downtown exciting and thriving is when there are multiple successes happening in the same place. So um, I really um, I want to charge us all with thinking um, creatively and collectively about how um, how we can succeed when others succeed. Um, so I know with my busking background tells me that without um, great outdoor dining and park benches, busking isn't very interesting and might not happen. Um, there's so there's a lot of just I want us all to be thinking about how we can share success, how we have a limited amount of space between our buildings for sidewalk and road and how we can manage that in the best way, how we can advise the city on how to manage that in the best way so that we can get the most success out of it for the most number of people and still maintain safety for pedestrians. So um, that's sort of how I want to lay, lay it out. And um, I'd, uh, I expect everyone to be cordial and honest and straightforward. And, um, and, that's, and, and really that's that. So Dana, uh, take us away. Dana, you're uh, you're muted. So, thank you. Um, just a little bit of background. Some of you have heard some of this. Down, Downtown Commission and Multimodal Commission met at the end of last year. Um, this is going to be a little bit higher level, but so we completed our downtown master plan in 2010. Since that time, we've had increases in users of all types. Downtown has gotten much busier. Um, we didn't implement some of the recommendations of the downtown master plan in terms of a management entity. Um, so we've struggled, I'd say. It's, there have been a lot of challenges um, since 2010 in terms of how these spaces are managed and how different parties interact and who gets prioritized. And so there were some intentional discussions about downtown public space management starting around 2014. Um, this was before my time. I joined the city in 2016. I know the buskers, a lot of those conversations were focused on busking activity, um, but there was a stakeholder group that had formed and there was different representatives from buskers and tourism and residents. Some folks, I know Marion West was part of that. Obviously the buskers collective was part of that. So there's some overlap here, but, um, but some progress was made through that work. Um, we worked with the buskers on a, a pilot program with some designated locations and on this um, street performance guide and kind of took this educational approach to managing some issues. We also worked with Wall Street folks to explore um, programming on the street and regular closures on the street. And we made some adjustments to push carts. So we, we got some good work done. Um, but we also didn't have like an overarching framework or really other priorities on the list um, to work on tackling. So in 2018, the Downtown Commission formed a public space management committee and that committee did awesome work and some more of you were part of that group. Peter Pillay, I know, is on that group. Andrew um, began and has continued to lead as chair, even though we had a bit of a hiatus. So. Um, and that group worked to develop a public survey in summer of 2019. We really wanted to hear from the public how these various uses of public space impact their experiences downtown, and also how the public felt um, about these different you know, amenities, seating, transit infrastructure, um, <laughs> all the things, how, what, kind of where things fell in level of importance. Knowing that there's a lot of overlap, we can't have all the things in the same place. You can't have on-street parking and a bike lane and a parklet and, you know, uh, freely flowing traffic. So we got a lot of really good input. And with that input, the committee then worked on kind of prioritizing some of these issues and programs in terms of what the city really needs to focus on. Although it's a big list, which we'll get to. And um, COVID happened, right? So just as we had a lot of momentum to kind of build out this framework to guide next steps, things got a little bit distracted. Um, the city worked on a temporary um, outdoor expansion program to help 
businesses operate more safely. Um, but also, staff took all of the work that had been done by the committee and started drafting this framework, which had been part of the initial goal um, for us to be able to develop. And now we have that framework. We've learned a ton through COVID. Um, we had a great meeting between Downtown Commission and Multimodal Commission last year to kind of talk about um, where we go with some of those temporary programs. And we're here together to, to reconvene, revisit, and move forward in this, in this particularly unique time when it comes to um, what we've learned about public space and where we go from there. So, yeah, I will say that during the pandemic, I think we all saw a lot of things that seemed stuck become unstuck and how we and how we're sort of dealing with what we've what we've known, what we've learned. And I think a really shared open mindedness as far as the nature of our public space downtown, how it's flexible to serve our needs like it was during COVID for a lot of people. Um, and now as we're sort of getting back to a you know, a lowercase and normal, <laughs> um, you know, we're sort of, we're, we're going to try to capture those experiences, give city staff uh, a good platform to make decisions um, that we can have an expectation of how they're going to be executed, what's going to, what we think is going to work uh, for everybody and go for there. So though we had a hiatus during the, during um, uh, COVID, this is really the right time to come back together and try to capture those lessons, um, identify um, you know, our strengths and challenges downtown and um, move forward on the foundation that we've already laid, so. Thanks, Andrew. So I'm just gonna jump in and highlight some things we learned from that public survey. Um, when we asked folks about how various uses of public space impact their experience downtown, we can see the blue here is very positive, the red is very negative, so the most positive um, impacts were greenery and plantings, um, outdoor dining, street performances, public seating, special events and festivals, you know, mostly positive. We get down to the bottom and we see construction related closures is, is very negative. Um, entertainment, tour vehicles and trolleys, somewhat negative. Um, some negative experiences of business signage, but mostly neutral. Um, and then we asked in a different way. Oops, this one's a little bit harder to read, but you do have links in your agenda. We asked in a different, different way the importance of these various um, aspects or uses of public space. Trees and shade was a high priority. Um, unexpected or unobstructed sidewalk space for walking and mobility. Mobility also very important. Greenery and plantings, um, street and sidewalk lighting. And then um, looking at the bottom importance, I hate that this one is at the bottom, availability of loading zones, young adult facilities, ease and availability of rideshare. Obviously, you know, this stuff is important to different folks in different ways, but we, it was, it was great to be able to learn these insights um, from, from over 900 folks in the public who took the survey. And so the committee, reviewed all those survey results and out of the 27 different uses of public space and different amenities in public space, the committee prioritized these 14 to be able to work on. They decided some of these other things they thought were kind of already running, um, didn't necessarily need a particular focus, but these 14 in different ways, um, the committee thought needed some more uh, analysis and focus. So these are the 14 things that we also, that we have then translated into this public space management framework document. I'll just give you guys just a minute. So larger sidewalks for gathering, restroom facilities, entertainment vehicles and trolleys, public art, street performances, um, outdoor dining, construction related closures, um, push cart vendors and merchandise sales. So there's a good number of things on here. Let me advance. So we took, the committee took those 14 things 
and looked at different goals that we have as a city pulled from various plans, many of them the downtown master plan, and, and considered if these uses of public space either aligned with those goals or conflicted with those goals. So we can see that um, larger sidewalk spaces for gathering that like aligned with all of the goals. Um, outdoor seating, it doesn't support people moving freely from place to place, but it does align with a lot of other goals. So this is an interesting table that, that kind of just helped develop a framework of different pros and cons for these 14 um, priority uses. And so again, we took those 14 focus areas and staff um, developed this framework document. And the purpose of the framework document is really to, it's to have a shared understanding of impacts, both positive and negative. We, each one of you brings a different perspective to the table. Each one of us staff, whether I'm working in transportation or public works or public art or planning, you know, we're bringing a different perspective to the table. So we can at least reference these, um, this shared acknowledgement of some of the benefits and some of the issues. The document also, so it serves as guidance for staff in, in the day-to-day -day operations that they and we manage. It also provides guidance for this new team, which you'll hear a little bit more about, that has been formed that focuses on urban design in the public realm. Um, and it, it serves and will serve as a tool for prioritization um, and, and help in better inform updates to the various policies and processes that we have that impact public space and can serve as a foundation for future planning efforts um, for updates to the downtown master plan, for a downtown streetscape plan, which we, we've we been talking a lot about. So that's the purpose of the framework. And we're gonna, we're gonna ask you guys to take, you know, it's about 25 pages, it's not exhaustive, but we have a few months to get a little bit deeper into that. We do hope that um, in a couple months that that we can absolutely make some adjustments and changes, but we hope that the downtown commission and the multimodal commission will, will kind of adopt this framework. Not that it can never change, um, but it is, it's a starting place. It's a framework. It's a foundation. Yeah. That really is sort of our, our immediate finish line is a document and a set of proposals that can be blessed by the two commissions that have co-created this one. Um, but which is downtown commission and multimodal commission and Multi transit commission. <laughs> and so we had the 14 priorities that are included in the framework. We're going to be asking you all in two or three months to help prioritize three of those. So it's just something to keep in mind as we move forward as well. And with that, and I'm going to stop screen sharing so that we can all see each other a little bit better. Just wanted to highlight some of the work that city's doing now that I think is particularly relevant um, to our to public space and just want to you guys to have on your radar as you start thinking more and more about um, some of these public space issues and opportunities. And so I'm going to let David talk a little bit about this new urban design working group that we have created. Thanks, Dana. Uh, my name is Dave Hazard. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an urban designer. I work with Dana and uh, Steph and Carly and folks in the planning department. My background is as a landscape architect, worked in the private sector for 11 years, um, and then I was a planner for the city of Hendersonville. So I kind of put my planning hat on and my design hat, and I've been with the city about five years looking at uh, a lot, mostly public space and looking at public space through uh, design lens. Recently, we've put together uh, what we call the Urban Design Working Group, which is an internal uh, group of staff made, uh, made up of largely designers or design-related professions, so landscape architects, engineers, planners, um, to review, vet, develop, um, be it the proposed design plans, uh, design standards, 
uh, public sector requests of, can I do X in this spot in the city? And we scramble around and try to look at it and say, hmm, is it good for the public? Is it bad for the public? Most of the time it's a balance, right? And try, we try to weigh all those things out as Dana's work is, is showing it that we have limited space and we, we do a lot in that limited space. Uh, but we also know, I, I think it's uh, over 25% of our land within the central business district is within the right of way, is public space. So it's a significant amount of uh, a space that we're working with. So this group is fairly new, so we're still getting our feet on the ground. But um, like I said, most things we're looking at is through a design lens. And it's really to um, look at specific projects or it may be looking at policies that, that affect the, the public realm. Uh, the first project that we've worked on is developing a requirement for a street plan um, design sheet, uh, if, if you want to call it, and that is for private sector development. So when we get a, a large building that's being proposed to build, being built in our downtown to take a, a, a harder look at the public realm. And so what this requirement essentially is, and, and we're about to launch this here real soon, it's not requiring any additional unified development ordinance standards, but it is making the developer, the designer, more adequately show those elements on a plan so that allows staff to review those plans in, in a finer detail. Um, I can tell you uh, firsthand from being on both sides of the design world and the review world, uh, tolerances are extremely tight in an urban setting. Uh, you, your finished floor elevation, you have a fraction of an inch to get that right from an ADA accessibility standpoint. So it, it, it is very challenging to design with, with those strict constraints. So how can we ask our designers and development community to do maybe a little better job? How can we do a better job as staff to review those plans and make sure what, what is actually being proposed that gets constructed as such? Um, that, so that that's one of the first initiatives we've been working on, and we sh we are going to be launching that pretty soon. Uh, the other one we've been looking at uh, that we just started up is the encroachment process for outdoor dining, uh, and so forth. Um, again, from beginning to end, what are our existing standards? Reviewing those, what is good, bad, the other about them? What is the processes that we have within the city for review, um, enforcement, encouragement? Um, you know, so we're, we're at the very front end of that. And I think that's where this group and, and potentially the Urban Design Working Group will have a, a lot of crossover and, and I think would be very helpful to one another um, as a sounding board to hear from all of you who are, um, you know, using our public spaces in, in a variety of, of ways. Um, and then how can city policies, design standards, et cetera, um, try to uh, do that delicate uh, balancing act of, of all the uses in that space and, and try to create the best downtown that we can. Um, I'll keep it short if there's questions or Dana, if I've missed anything, um, feel free to add. Thanks, David. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, I know one of the I think one of the other outcomes I want to highlight from this process, um, especially with relating to the um, design standards on the on the the sidewalk side of things or the public realm side of things, is really about helping the public have reasonable expectations about what's changing and um, how you know our downtown is changing, um, you know during the planning process. So it's not just all this surprise of what's happened here, um, how was it considered, and things like that. So that I wanted to highlight that as another advantage to um what what we're doing together absolutely john john i to ask a question yeah um so david um as a planner developer somebody who's intricately involved with this um what do you think and i may be jumping the gun sorry um what do you think about the proposed bike lanes on Patton and collin um I, I don't know if we're going to get into that level of detail. I, I, everything, it, as I said, is, is most of our right of ways are very constrained right now and to try to get uh, required sidewalk widths, to try to get uh, multimodal facilities, parking, uh, so forth and so on. I will say, I think, you know, the future of we cannot obviously keep expanding our roads, especially within our downtown with existing buildings there. It's, it's not like in the suburbs where they just build them wider and wider, which really isn't a solution either. But so I think we have to start looking to other modes to allow folks to move about our city that's not in a car. 
Um, but you're hearing me say a lot, it's it's striking that balance. How to, right now, currently, most of us that come downtown come in automobile. So it, it's got to function as such. But we also have to, I think, start moving towards a more of a, a, at least allow for additional options so we can slowly transition into a way where um, if you choose so, you would have the ability to, to not move about in a car. Yeah, I also want to highlight, if you start looking at so much of our public space downtown it's a lot of the decisions that went into how that space is allocated are really legacy um and are and are really begging to be up up to date um you know there's the expectations of how we use public space is a lot different now than when a lot of the decisions were made that decided where to put a curb and how wide to make a road um and things like that so it's we have there's actually a tremendous amount of very poorly allocated um, space downtown that we can that um, and this process will hopefully help help us make decisions that will allocate that um, to more people's benefit. I'll just jump in real quick because it looks like there's some more interest in this topic and I think that's fine. We can take a few minutes to talk about this one. Definitely wanted to make you all aware that this project is happening. It's, it's one of the things we're working on that impact public space. We also do have Jessica Morris, our assistant transportation director here on the call. Um, hopefully, you know, we've done a couple walking tours and we've also, um, we had virtual um, engagement meetings to talk more about that project. but. Um, but yeah, I think a few, some, just a very brief discussion, if there's a couple more comments on this is, is totally appropriate. Um, Gio? I just uh, kind of piggyback on this. It's, it's been a while since we've talked about traffic study and circulation studies uh, downtown. Can, can you give us a brief update of where we are? Um, you know, street closures, one-way streets, that kind of thing. Where are we in that process? It's been a while since I've heard anything about that. But Gio, I, I feel like that's a big question, and for us to like be able to treat it separately, is that something that we can ask Dana to um, come back to us, um, come back to us with, just to keep us on track for today? That does um, sound like a big question. I'll say that street and sidewalk closures is one of those fourteen issues that had previously been prioritized. That may end up being one of the top three that this group ends up prioritizing that helps us know as city staff, like we've got to really, you know, clarify and make some improvements and better understand what's going on. So yes, absolutely something we can talk about um, in a later meeting. Yeah, if you can, if you can resource us with, with anything that, um, that exists on your side of it, uh, I think that would be great instead of jumping into the weeds right now. Are you good with that, Gio? Great, and I, I saw Maggie's hand. Uh, I just, I just, uh, I hadn't okay. heard. Uh, you know, we're talking about all these other things, but, but really, um, um, it's been a while since we've really talked about, you know, how our circulation patterns are going. So I would like to hear where we are with that as we continue talking about shared streets and all these other things, because obviously it's all interrelated. So thank you. Absolutely, thanks. And um, Maggie, you had your hand up. I think I'm going to get us in the weeds. So I'm going to try and say like one sentence. What I think is cool about bike lanes is, and this is as a cyclist, sidewalks are super duper expensive. And to really get big sidewalks, you might need to like push into private property, which gets super duper complicated. And we see that when there's bike infrastructure, that sometimes pedestrians, when needed, also share that space, which a transportation planner would probably kill me for saying out loud. I think there's like a practicality that's interesting. So thank you for letting me get that comment out. I know we're going to dig in it deeper, but, um, and I think it was John who brought this up. Like I'd love to email or Slack and like hear what's on your mind about this, because it does seem like it's a pretty relevant conversation having just done the tours over the last weekend. So anyway, thank you for letting me say that. Thanks, John. I don't know if you can hear us, but um, particularly for businesses like yours that are on this, route we want to better you make sure we're understanding your operational needs I'll, i can follow up with you to make sure that we're connecting um okay great thank you so I, from here yeah i wanted to make you all aware of that work and i also want to just highlight a couple other things big exciting things staff is working on one is um 
working on a plan for improvements to Pack Square Plaza. And I'm gonna just let Carly talk for a few minutes about that and, and a temporary public art program that she is working on kind of in conjunction with that. Yeah, hi everybody. I am Carly Stevenson, as Dana mentioned. I am an urban desi designer working with uh, Dana, David and Steph in the urban design and place strategies group within the planning department. And I've been here for almost three months. So pretty new learning all the things and meeting all the people. Um, I came here from Raleigh's urban design center where I worked for around four years, uh, which the urban design center was also nestled within the planning department. So have some municipal uh, planning and design experience. Uh, I got my master of landscape architecture at NC State University and my undergraduate is actually in journalism and mass communication from UNC Chapel Hill. So I have a lot of um, experience, I think, that has brought me to this position working with all of you all at the city of Asheville, and I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Um, so diving in quickly, an overview of the Pack Square Improvements Project. The city of Asheville, in partnership with Buncombe County, put out a request for proposals uh, looking for qualified candidate, candidates to manage a collaborative community engagement and planning process for Pack Square Plaza. Um, so this project manager, they really want to dive in and examine the past, present, and future of Pack Square with special attention paid to the former uh, Vance Monument site. And part of the deliverables uh, for this manager will be a public engagement plan and then also uh, producing a document that will use narratives and illustrations to really celebrate and memorialize uh, Pack Square and where it was. Uh, where it is currently and, and where we hope it, it will go. So requests for proposals went out in February and that um, proposal process is closed. And we have two proposals that met the project prerequisites and interviews are gonna be happening over the next couple of weeks for that. Um, and we're hopeful that the project will kick off in May and anticipating that that process will last six to nine months. And then in tandem with this, I am also working um, on a Pack Square temporary public art program. So as part of the engagement effort uh, for this revisioning process, we will be releasing a call for artists to produce and install 10 temporary art projects or experiences in Pack Square Plaza that respond to the theme of social equity and inclusion and answer a couple questions. Um, namely what Pack Square Plaza should look and feel like in the future and what stories haven't been told uh, up to this point and really relying on our artists to help um, engage the community and start those conversations and get some really good feedback as we go through this revisioning process for the for the larger plaza. Um, we are looking at stipends for the artists ranging from $500 to $1,500, and we're asking for all types of artwork. So it will be traditional, non-traditional experiences and performances. And so that is still under development and underway, and we'll hopefully, hopefully that call will go out around the time that the um, Pack Square Plaza revisioning process uh, begins. Thanks, Carly. Lyle? Do you have a question? Um, Carly, that's great to meet you. Oh, you're uh, muted. Oh. oh, no, my my computer, that was my fault, okay. Okay, I don't wanna mess this up. Uh, Carly, very nice to hear your input. Uh, we've never met or, and I've not have a lot of data on what's going on, just uh, kind of scuttlebutt of what's going on with Pack Square. Um, we as buskers, uh, uh, me particularly CPAC Square is a huge opportunity for us that we've had for years, but now with the changing of PAC Square, we'd really like to be uh, more involved in that. I see PAC Square as being uh, an oasis for us buskers uh, with the removal of the statue and what could be done there uh, and trying to work with our very traditional and, you know, uh, public speaking area of free speech uh, and some problems that we're having with that corner as buskers uh, at that tip of uh, Pack Square, the beginning of the park. Um, 
a lot of our problems with busking that seems to have been with the growth growth of the city uh, is shrinking sidewalk space. Now I see Pack Square on both sides and the whole park uh, as being everything that we need as far as width of the sidewalks. We have plenty of width there. We have the park. Um, the problem that I see is 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 somewhat lighting at night. Um, buskers aren't going to go to a place where there's no people. Uh, I feel like that could, could be some work on that as far as um, lighting an area better. I love the, the traditional lighting that we have there of those old uh, posts, um, but we need to attract more people into that area to get a buskers in. We have enough space there to, to really do a bunch of buskers and the jugglers have been very well representing there in the park lately and uh, the idea of the public art program is great i look at some of the models of a fella here that had some work in uh, in new orleans with uh, the parks and the jackson square scene in, in nola with the public art and uh if we could attract more artists there uh like to show art to maybe vend art um uh, some street artists like portraitures, you know, make it really attractive for people to see what's going on down that square. It seems like at night, say, from the park to like beginning of the park to uh, say the chocolate lounge, that's area starting to be utilized more. Um, it, we have a great opportunity to be able to have good buskers come in as buskers. We're losing a lot of space. So maybe you're seeing a lot more solo buskers instead of the old big bands that used to come here and really entertain and really get a large group. Those large bands aren't coming here anymore because we're losing space. Uh, they are our A teams as far as the, the, the class of busker that we can get uh, and, and keep getting. Uh, we have an opportunity at Pack Square uh, to build that area up. Uh, I hope that I can be a part of some of those discussions about some of my ideas about maybe a first Friday where we could have some vending going on, maybe without a permit to get some of these, you know, vendors that we see on the side of the street with the blankets, you know, the kids selling things. And maybe we could give them an opportunity maybe once a month to be able to, to kind of be in that park and, uh, and create a scene. Uh, that people would be pulled into that area. So that's just my two cents, uh, uh, but I, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, that's all great feedback. Um, thank you for, for that. And I hope that you will be involved in the revisioning process as we get this underway. Great, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, Lyle, Lyle there will be, um, you know, as that temporary public art in PAC yeah. Square program gets rolled out, there, there will be, uh, what, 10 opportunities? Um, so, uh, you know, Lyle, think about assembling some buskers to, um, you know, to to make an application for one of those opportunities. I'll, I'll, I'll put my two cents in real quick. Now, this doesn't have to be a long discussion. Maybe it's for you know uh, another venue uh, or another meeting is that uh, the problem that we're having at Pack Square right now is uh, some of uh, the freedom uh, speech uh, freedom of speech folks that are coming out and uh, and it's running into a multi-dimensional problem of uh, noise ordinance uh, and people uh, we, we've lost pack square a lot of our days and early evenings to our uh, some of our uh, first our, some of our public speaking folks and our, our, our I, I, I won't say who it is yet but uh we need to have some kind of discussion about what's happening at Pack Square as far as we're losing three or four busking spots because of volume of some of our public uh, speaker folks. And uh, we need to have that change or we are going to lose busking in that area. Uh, buskers create uh, a, a sense of art and culture and uh, Pack Square has very been has always been important to us. Say at the Noodle Lounge in front of Passims and or, or Passana, and uh, we have to have a discussion about what's going on there and what, how we can change things and what we can do uh, to cooperate with our buskers about volume. Uh, volume problems from Pack Square. Uh, it, it's a multi-dimensional problem when there is somebody across the street with a bullhorn or loudspeakers for hours 
um, drowning us out, uh, our volume is going to go up. Uh, we see that, that that we've got that space back in front of uh, the sauna and the noodle shop. Uh, we have that space back. They've pushed it back now. Uh, I don't know if that's temporary or that's going to come back. Uh, volume levels from buskers, because we're too close maybe to the seating areas, uh, is direct result of us, whoever is electric there, of having to turn up to be able to be heard when there's something across the street. And I know this is a very slippery slope we're on here. Um, I've tried to have dialogue with uh, some of the folks in question and uh, just been shut down at every, every turn. Uh, I've worked very closely with Grania at the, at the sound ordinance about uh, the complaints that, that, that she has gotten. And uh, I'm distributing her card out to most of the restaurants and most of uh, the folks that are complaining to us. Uh, as buskers, I get a lot of complaints. I'm kind of the guy on the ground there. So what complaints come through, I kind of hear them first and uh, need to address these issues quickly or uh, by this by summer comes in. And uh, we have an opportunity to have busking back at Pack Square. And let's keep that. That's an art and culture. Like, it's got to be just a mandatory thing for us in Asheville. You know, to keep this the spirit going of what we're doing and we're losing spaces and pack square could be a very good thing so uh keep me informed and everything and my email is available and all that stuff uh, yep. i'd love to talk to more of these planner folks about our two cents and you know our lay experiences buskers of where busking can be how good it is and what we do so thank you again all right thanks while i just like I to point it's... out it is like it is freedom of speech it's not freedom of volume um Gotcha. And so we have to, gotcha. you know, that's, I think, from a city's perspective, um, you know, co getting folks to be able to cooperate on volume is um, does, does not mean that we're um, stopping free speech by any means. It actually can increase the amount of free speech. So sure. um, thanks for paying attention to that, Lyle. I, I, I do want to move along because I know I've got to go to work downtown yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> pretty soon. Yeah. So Anybody let's keep going. Let's keep going through our agenda if we can. Although we'll I think keep hand anybody downtown wants to see me at mass, just show up and meet me. We'll keep moving. I do think that's a good example of some of these conflicts we deal with in public space. One of the programs we could have highlighted is this new noise ordinance that we have in effect. And of course, it's a balance. If you're limiting sound for a certain user group, you're going to be limiting it for other user groups. But luckily, we do have staff that's dedicated to this. And Lyle, I know you've been working closely with them. So it's definitely one um you know to continue to monitor and to continually improve the other couple things i heard you say related were related to lighting and related to merchandise sales and those are two things that also one of the those are on the list of 14 previous um issues that had been prioritized so we'll we'll see where we can go and and what rises to the top peter did you want to make a quick comment well no it was more about the noise from um the so-called protesting spot in front of the old former vance monument um you know there's rules and regulations um unwritten that the buskers follow um i know the some of the groups that go to the former vance monument um don't follow any rules and you know i think you know, including noise. Um, but I also don't think freedom of speech is someone setting up speakers and a microphone and just singing. But they're, you know, they're claiming that it's freedom of speech and they just go on all day and they are fair weather, so they will be back. I have seen them a couple of times so far. Um, so when the weather gets We're better, every day, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a larger fight. Um, so yeah, it'll be good to, to find a different forum to discuss that a little bit further. All right. So Peter, I'd like to meet you. I'll knock on your door. Great. We'll keep moving. We're just going to revisit. Um, we're going to visit some of these temporary outdoor expansion programs that the city worked on during COVID and um, some quick status updates. And then we're just moving into um, planning for our next meetings. So I'm going to pull back up my screen. And Lyle, I do think it's interesting that that 
you that you feel like space is being lost because our sidewalks aren't getting smaller and so you're really talking about how spaces are being managed and utilized and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about here with this with this group of stakeholders and looking at in person when we meet next week um, so AVL shares space this program we launched early during COVID to allow businesses and organizations to um, temporarily utilize outdoor spaces, um, most specifically streets and sidewalks, to be able to operate more safely and to enable safer customer access during COVID. Um, and I'm just, I'm going to be real quick. I know some of you have kind of are very familiar and have, have seen us go through this a few times. But a few of the elements to highlight, um, we made it real easy and real quick for um, businesses, including restaurants, to be able to utilize additional sidewalk spaces. We, we continued to follow our current standards, which is one reason that we're, we're taking another look at these standards. Um, we just kind of expedited the process to do so during COVID. Um, we also worked with different business districts to remove all of the on-street parking along particular corridors and go ahead and proactively open up that space to all of the businesses and organizations on those streets through shared streets or pedestrian priority zone zones. And then we, uh, we opened up a process for businesses and organizations to be able to utilize the on-street parking spaces closest to their business. Um, for dedicated use. And we, we've seen a number of different types of those um, uses in place. There's built structures, and then we have um, the opportunity to just use the parking space. And I am going to, so generally the feedback on these programs, both from businesses and the public has been very positive. Um, so I definitely want to acknowledge that at the same time, there's been a bunch of lessons learned and a bunch of challenges. Um, we learned that even though we opened this program up to, to storefront businesses downtown, um, it primarily has been utilized by restaurants. I think it just made the most sense in how they operate their businesses to be able to take advantage of this. Um, we didn't charge any fees in 20 and 21. We know that's not a great approach, right? So we're taking a look at our fee structure to just make sure that that what we're charging and what we have been charging for the past many years is appropriate. This is valuable um, public space. We know that that a lot of areas that are used for for seating and that were used as part of these expansion programs they're empty during off hours. So it's definitely an observation and a consideration as we move forward. Um, balancing the needs of various user groups, Lyle, it's felt like, like space has been lost. There's, there's space lost and there's space gained. So, you know, balancing the needs of these user groups is really important, particularly as we look at um, longer term programs. You know, COVID was a unique situation and we acted quickly but that's why we're working together to get this right as we move forward. Um, ADA access was a, was a challenge with parklets especially. Um, so we worked very hard for each individual location to ensure that there was access, but it continues to be a bit of a challenge when we look at these kind of unique um, configurations and use of street space. Management and enforcement, oh my gosh, I know it's not fun to hear about this, but like we don't have staff to, to keep an eye on, on how things are actually going on site. You know, it takes a lot of staff time to review all this stuff. And so, so particularly as we move forward, we wanna ensure that we're able to, um, to, to manage these programs in the way that will help them be successful. Um, our existing sidewalks are narrow. It's what, 60% of our downtown sidewalks are eight feet or less. So, so yes, we have the street, you know, as, as part of this space to work with, but the sidewalks themselves and the existing programs that we have for utilizing sidewalks, I mean, it's, it's real tight. And so it's tough to be able to, to balance these needs. 
Loss of parking revenue, right, when we're taking on street parking, that is a consideration to be aware of, as well as loss of parking spaces. Um, we did learn in our public space management survey that off street parking, so parking in garages, was a higher priority for folks than on street parking. Um, so that's interesting because I think during COVID, there's been even more, you know, businesses obviously want their customers to be able to find parking. But I think there's been even more of a move towards um, from the business community towards towards having acknowledging that this is valuable space and that there's other ways that these on street spaces can be used. Um, not all businesses have been in suitable locations to take advantage of these programs. And, you know, we've kind of we opened it up and we offered it. There's there's got to be kind of a more fair and equitable way to administer. Um, programs like this, so it's a consideration moving forward. Maintenance issues, always an issue, but um, as we look at a long-term program, who's removing the snow and how are we accessing these areas for street cleaning, things like that. And as we look at programs that I know several of you are really interested in, um, we did the shared streets that did allow vehicular access, um, but there's also opportunities for pedestrian only areas, you know, maybe during certain times that does pose particular challenges when it comes to delivery needs and emergency access needs. So just um, adding that to the challenges list as we move forward. And just quick updates on status. So a lot of these programs um, you'll see downtown as we use streets and sidewalks differently. We also allowed businesses on, on other commercial corridors to use their private parking lots um, more flexibly. We're working one-on-one -on -one with those businesses to, to see if we can find a path to permanency. Um, there's, there's potentially some conflicts with zoning, but hopefully on a case-by-case -case basis, we can support um, the continuation of that opportunity. Public sidewalks, so we're gonna be talking a lot about this. And when we meet on site next month, I think we're gonna be looking at some, um, some important and tough questions together. And um, we really look forward to those discussions and getting your feedback. But we're, we're looking at standards, we're looking at what we've allowed in the past, we're looking at what should be charged for certain things, we're looking at how to make these spaces publicly accessible during off hours and what those implications are. How, how would a business, you know, end up storing its materials if we ask that some things are removed during off hours? So, so we really kind of look forward to getting more in the weeds with you on some of that. Um, parklets and streeteries. So we're allowing what's in place now to continue. And we really, we, we're making incremental, you know, we're having lots of discussions. We're looking at other cities, trying to make some incremental progress towards thinking about a longer term program. At the same time, it does, it takes resources um, to do this work and, and particularly to be able to manage these types of programs moving forward. So we have some funding requests and um, through the ARPA process, through the city's budget process, but I know the conversations we're having with this group and the conversations we'll have about sidewalks are going to help us um, be able to advance at least a framework as we take step towards um, longer term park or streetery programs. And shared streets, this is one that we want to keep working with you all to understand what that looks like to you. Is that, um, you know, space for yoga and um, aerobics? Is that space for vendors? Is that outside vendors? Is that vendors on the street? Is that, um, is that just a pedestrian only space that doesn't have you know, intentional programming? So that we know with any continuation, continuation or long-term program like that, there's gotta be um, you know, public private participation. And so um, definitely looking forward to continuing those conversations with you all, not looking at this moment to launch anything big or new, because again, we're just not there in terms of resources, but um, just want, you know, to let you know how we're how we're looking at that moving forward. All right, yay! This I swear, all the other meetings are going to be more fun. Really, <laughs> it's been a lot of listening and um, moving forward. I know we're going to have a lot of awesome discussion. Um, yeah, Peter. Um, sorry, I'm yeah. just chiming in whenever. Um, sure. 
I think I'm comfortable talking now. Um, so the parklets, yeah, um, I think they're great. Um, I think, um, but, and I think they've had helped restaurants and I'm glad at least some businesses have been able to utilize them. Um, I'm just thoroughly terrified of the what if someone driving has like a medical episode that they lose control of the car and um, and what happens with the parklet because it's not really constructed that safely. Um, so that's that. And is there any discussion on the the 10 minute park loading zones or or run in and pick up something and leave right away? Good you question. A lot of those. Those are a lot of spots around downtown. Yeah, they are a lot of spots. And we did, you know, we rolled those out quickly and we tried to place them in areas where there would be a lot of those needs. We are looking at um, kind of TBD on if that's something that stays long term or not. In the short term, we are um, welcoming feedback on if some of those should be removed. Like, I think we would love to be able to scale that back a little bit um, in areas where I know we put two in some locations, maybe only one is needed, or if they're really not getting used and they're only getting abused, um, we would love input from, from nearby neighbors who have their eyes on that to let us know. And so we haven't, we, we want to go out and engage with everybody and, and um, haven't, you know, prioritized that, that on the ground work at this moment, but we do have an email address um, and I can follow up with you where you can let parking services know um, if that's something, you know, if there's particularly if we feel like one or two of those can be removed, we would love that input and we can start kind of taking steps in that direction. And Peter, I, I hear you what you said about the parklets and, you know, considering the safety issues of, you know, like a, a, a runaway vehicle. The one one of the ways that I think about this is does it does adding something increase risk? where it didn't occur before. Um, Cause we already have, you know, that a, a terrible situation like that would already be terrible, um, you know, to, to people that are just on the sidewalk. Um, and if we're relying on parked cars to protect pedestrians on the sidewalk, that's only gonna help at certain times, you know, and it's not a reliable, it's not a reliable um, method to use, you know, uh, on-street parking to protect pedestrians necessarily, because the people may choose to park there or may not, or the street may be closed for a special event. You know, we we sacrifice this all the time. So I, when I think about the safety issues, I think is it in, is it changing the safety level? You know, in the in the face of tragedy, I think I think parklets probably represent similar um, uh, similar danger as walking down the street. Uh, which we already accept um, all the time. So I, I hope that that we can get to a place that um, um, where we can uh, recognize the safety issues, but also have the nice things. Totally. Yeah, it's also important just to point out, like, I mean, we, you know, we work with traffic engineering, we work with um, building safety and, and all of that when we um, rolled out this temporary program but as we look at a long-term program we obviously safety is the top priority and um and we want to make sure that things are getting built to appropriate standards and that we're taking all of that into consideration and we do see you know a lot of other cities are, are rolling these out many other cities that have tried things in a temporary format are are in the process of kind of transitioning those longer term so um, there are things we can learn as well. But absolutely, safety is not gonna be compromised in, um, in any of these programs. Yeah, and the reason I said that is, you know, I'm gonna admit something that you guys all might hate. I lived in LA for a while and um, they're the Santa Monica farmer's markets, like one of the best in the country. They've been there for years and years and years. And they had cones at you know it took up a few blocks of santa monica they had cones which they've had forever but an elderly person had a stroke or a heart attack and just ran through the street of the market killed a bunch of people and you know hurt a bunch of people and you know ever since they put trucks at the end so no one could 
drive through there. And it's, it's not because it's, you know, someone's being fallacious or, but it could be. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I think that's, you know, it's a much longer discussion, but I think a parklet of a restaurant setting up a spot and I know Mike has one and he has a beautiful one that it's like, it's really built out and it's, it's quite great. Um, but like, if I sat down and ate there, I would think I would be safe, even though I am in the street. Um, you know, sidewalks are all over the world and, you know, I'm always watching out, walking on the sidewalk in different pace. But I don't think I'd be doing that if I was eating at a restaurant. And I don't know if I, you know, if someone did get hurt, is my insurance agent going to go to court and say what you just said, Andrew, and say, hey, they took the risk. They ate there. They knew what they were getting into. How would that look for the restaurant? How would that look for the city? I mean, we don't want that either. Oh, yeah. um, but I also... Think- you for know, our, our outdoor special events, we are, I mean, we take it very seriously in terms of blocking um, access for vehicles to drive through. And so absolutely, I mean, we, we have safety standards for anything that's happening um, where vehicles are able to access. Yeah. And I like them. I don't want them to disappear. And I think they've been quite helpful for a lot of businesses. And um, yeah, that's yeah, I, I think I think you know for all these different things that we're that we're talking about using using downtown for in public space for. I mean, none of them really work if people aren't safe or don't feel safe. Yeah, I know buskers aren't going to make tips from people that don't feel safe. Um, you know, you have to. It is that is a sort of prime ingredient. Um, uh, so you know, I, I think that we're not here to you know, to, uh, I don't think no one, anyone is here to, to, um, uh, sacrifice safety. It's a, I think we need to take it as a, as a, as a baseline foundation of what we're doing, um, and see what we can build on top of that. Yeah, we're coming up on time here. I'm going to do a doodle poll to see if we can find an April date. I want to make a couple hours for us to get out. I also, the one thing I didn't do here that I wanted to, um, I'm going to, in a follow-up, I'll just direct you to it, even though it's in your agenda, linked in your agenda. When we, in December, we had a meeting with downtown commission and multimodal commission, and we asked a lot of questions um, about use of sidewalk space and use of parking spaces, and we did some quick polling. Um, Some of those we want to revisit with you all when we go out um, next month, but I just, I think it's interesting to take a look at kind of where some of that was following, falling, where there's a lot of agreement or where there's differing opinions. Um, and we're never all gonna agree on, on, on everything, especially as complicated as public spaces, but hopefully if we can at least understand each other, right? Then we're gonna be able to move forward and advance um, the way that some of these things are managed by the city. With that, does anyone, any, um, 12.29, any burning questions or comments? If there aren't none, I'll just, I've got a couple things to close with. Great. Um, um, so I, I think that, you know, those are sort of the bare minimum of what we can get out of working together is learning from each other, listening to each other, um, maybe hearing about some opportunities to work together that we didn't think of before some common interests that we didn't think of before you know maybe maybe in this meeting you you see somebody else who has the same piece of the puzzle as you do the same problem that you can work together maybe so you see somebody who has the matching piece of the puzzle who has a solution for you to work together so even outside of what we can bring to the city as far as our advice goes on how to deal with public space management we're already dealing with public space management in our own ways so if we can by working together and you treating each other as a resource, I think that is really that is really what we can get out of it. The other thing that I would charge you guys with is that when some of us are thinking more of like, um, you know, like uh, how is public space management working everywhere? Some of us are saying, how is public space management working in front of our, our front of our business or a single location? I'd like everyone to sort of switch hats from where you're naturally coming from and to think about um, for folks like buskers to um, to think about individually, what does this individual business need from 
what's going on in front of their business and from everybody else to think about, well, what is, what does the bigger picture need for what's going on in the entire space, public space management um, situation with the city. So I, I'd really like us all to think, how can we create more success together? How can we better leverage the opportunities that our downtown presents us? How can we bring more people to share that opportunity than are right now? Um, and how can we get them there in new ways? And um, how can we um, better allocate uh, you know, old resources like pavement and things that weren't really thought out for how we're using them now? Um, so those are the sort of like, this is what I kind of want to charge you guys with before our next meeting is to um, both think in the little view and the big view about um, where we want to, not just what we're dealing with today, but where we want to get to and how we can get there um, together. So um, that's what I do that all the time when I walk around downtown. I'm constantly measuring and thinking and about, about how the public space works and what's working and what isn't and um, whether that's something that we can work together on or that we need to work with the city on. So that is, that's kind of how I wanted to set out our marching orders until our next meeting, which I hope to be in person um, so that we can actually uh, walk around together and um, you know be face to face with um, our challenges and our opportunities downtown. But I'd like to thank everybody for coming and being here. Um, and um, it's uh, I've got to go. I got to go work for Lazoom now. So if you see the purple bus, go you know wave wave to me. <laughs> um, uh, but um, Dana, if there's if there's nothing else that you've got to add to this, then um, and I don't see any hands up right now then I am going to, um, um, okay, Lyle. I just want to say thanks for including me in this. And uh, I think it's a step forward. As far as what our problems that we're having, buskers have always been here. We've always, you know, we have our spots. It seems like what we're having problems is, is that we're having lots and lots of more people coming in town. So we're having lots more foot traffic, therefore causing a problem with buskers. So we need to develop that for us and, uh, you know, to accommodate the amount of traffic that we're having on the street as the town's growing, uh, we need to figure this out. So thank you so much for having me uh, a part of this, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you. I think one of the really strong, um, Pete, I think, having buskers in a meeting like this is really strong because buskers need so much other success to be happening for busking to work. And so I, I think that is really one of the things that buskers add in a really unique and actual way to a conversation like this is because we need so much else to be going right before busking can go right. Um, so thank you for, thank you for being here, Lyle and help organize people. So um, that's it. Hey, uh, meeting adjourned everybody. Have a great Friday. Enjoy the weather. And hopefully we will all see each other in person. Look for a doodle poll from Dana um, about April. So you guys have a great day. I'll see you out there. Peace out, guys.